Module 5, Setting Up Actions and Events. In this module, you'll learn the basics of the Actions and Events system. You'll set up a pop-up to appear after the user scrolls a certain distance down the page. You'll set up a Buy button to appear after a video has played a certain length of time. And you'll learn how to set up your mouse upon entering and leaving events. First, download and unzip the Module 5 resource folder, which contains images needed in this module. In the Funnels page, Click Import Funnel. Paste in the share code in the walkthrough and click Import. You'll be asked whether you want to create this funnel now or later. Click Create Now and choose a domain in which to save it. Then click Create. The Module 5 funnel will open. Section A. Overview of the Actions and Events System. The Actions and Events System lets you trigger events on your page when certain things happen. Using the system, you can create all sorts of different events. Covering everything would take a very long time, but in this tutorial, we're going to walk you through how to create three different examples so you can get a feel for how the system works. Example one, when the button is clicked, the event, a new layer, the target, will disappear, the action. In example two, 30 seconds after the layer has appeared, the event, a pop-up, the target, will appear, which is the action. And then in example three, when the user moves to exit the page, the event, an image, which is the target, will appear to change color, and that is, of course, the action. Types of events. You can set actions for events that happen on page, layer, and element level which when you choose depends on what you want to happen. Using the examples above, example one is an element level event. These are set up using the actions and events section in the elements properties panel. You have to give your elements a name in order to be used as a target. Example two can be a layer level event. Layer level events are set up using the actions and events section in the three dotted menu in the layers dialog. Example three will be a page level event. These are set up using the Actions button in the top toolbar. Targets, hidden and visible. Actions can make a target hide or fade out from visible or show or fade in from hidden. By default, elements and layers are set to start visible when the page is loaded. If you want a target element to only be shown when an event occurs, you have to set it to start hidden or the action will look as if nothing has happened. Section B. Setting a pop-up to appear after the user scrolls a certain distance down the page. Step 1. Setup. Click the scroll pop-up in the Module 5 funnel. We'll be setting the page so that once the user has scrolled 50% down the page, which is the event, a pop-up layer, which is a target, will appear, and that is the action. The pop-up layer has been created, but it is currently set to default start visible and we need to change this to Start Hidden. Click on the Layers button in the top toolbar to open the Layers panel. Now, select the pop-up layer and change it to Start Hidden. Step two, apply the action. Remember that this is an event which determines how the action is set up. Now, we want the action to trigger in the event that the user has scrolled down 50% of the page. So this is a page level action. This means that we need to set this up using the page level actions button on the top toolbar. So click on the actions button to open the actions and events list. Click on add new action. The new events dialog will open and we'll need to set the event, action and target before we can press done. They can be set in any order. Set the event type to page scroll when page is at 50%. Set the actions to show target. Finally, set the target to layer pop-up. Include contained elements. Then select done. This action will now be listed in your pages, actions, and events. You can edit or delete the actions from here later if you like. Save your work. Then click Preview 
and try scrolling the page to check that your action functions are working. Aha! Uh -huh. You can view a completed example of this action using the share code in the walkthrough. Section C. Having a buy button appear after a video has passed a certain point. Step 1. Setup. Click on the video play timer page in the module 5 funnel. We will be adding a video element and an action so that a buy button will appear once the video has been playing for 30 seconds. The button has already been created named Buy Now and set to Start Hidden. Step 2. Create the video element. Video timer events can only be applied to video elements. They do not work with YouTube, Vimeo, or background video elements. This is because Convertry, rather than an external service, Convertry needs to be the controller of the player in order to determine the length of the playback. To add a video element, Click on Media in the Elements tray. And select Video. The Videos Properties panel will open on the right-hand side of the editor. Enter the URL of the MP4 you're using and turn on Autoplay on Desktop. Then, position and resize the video element as shown here. Then use the Send Backward button on the Quick Actions toolbar so that the Info panel and button both appear in front of it. Then use the Send Backward button on the Quick Actions toolbar so that the Info panel and button both appear in front of it. Step 3. Set up the action. Once the video has been playing for 30 seconds event, we want the Buy Now button, Target, to appear action. This event applies to the video so we need to apply the event to this element by selecting the video and opening the actions and events in the element properties panel. Click on add new action. And the new event element panel will appear. Set up the action as follows, event type, video time, video passes time marker, enter 30 seconds. For action, show target. And for the target, select buy now in the drop down. Include contained elements. Then select done. Then save your work. Then preview the page to check your actions work as planned. Section D. Setting up a mouse enter and leave effect. Step 1. Set up and planning the actions. Click on the Mouse Enter Lead page in the Module 5 funnel. We will be setting the page so that the top image fades into a beach sunset image when the user's mouse enters it, then back again when the mouse leaves. So we need to create two events. One, when the mouse enters the palm trees image, vent, the beach sunset target will appear, action. And the second, when the mouse leaves the beach sunset image event, the beach sunset target will fade, which is the action. Remember that it is the event which determines how we set up the action. So the first action will be set up on the palm trees image and the second on the beach sunset image. Step two, adding the image. First, we need to add the new image to the page and set it to start hidden. Select image from the elements tray. The image panel will open and click Upload. Then navigate to where you store the Module 5 Resources folder. Open Beach Sunset and press Select. 
put the image selected press full width on the quick actions bar. Then drag the lower edges of the image down until it fully covers the image it is intended to replace. Currently, the sunset image covers an important container. With the image still selected, press send backward on the quick actions toolbar until the start here container is fully visible. Change the image from start visible to start hidden using the options on the quick actions toolbar. In this case, we want only the selected element to start hidden, not the things that it contains. So choose start hidden selected element only. Finally, the beach sunset image will need to be named so that it can be used as a target. Click on general properties in the element properties tray and enter the name beach sunset. Step 3. Action 1. Now that the elements are in place, we can apply the first action. Let's preview action 1. When the mouse enters the palm tree image event, the beach sunset target will appear. The event in action 1 concerns the palm tree's image, so we'll need to select it to set up the action. Temporarily move the sunset image out of the way and select the palm tree's image. Choose Action and Events from the Properties panel. Select Add New Action. Set the event type to Mouse Movement on Mouse Entering Element. Set the action to Show, Fade in Target, and for the target, in the drop-down menu, select Beach Sunset. We don't want the image to change again if the user begins to enter their details on the Start Here form, so keep Include Elements selected. Press Done, then move the Beach Sunset image back into position. Save and preview your work. Check that action one is working. Voila! Step four, action two and common errors. Now let's review action two. When the mouse leaves the beach sunset image event, the beach sunset target will fade out. Action. Select the beach sunset image and choose actions and events in the properties panel. Set the event type to mouse movement on mouse leaving the element. Set the action to hide, fade out target, and for the target, set it to beach sunset. Since we don't want the form to fade to, set include contain elements to off. Press Done, then Save and preview the page to check the effect. Now for the common errors. What would happen if we were to set up the mouse enter and the mouse leave actions on the same element? If both actions were set up on the palm tree's image, Convertry would fade the sunset image in over the palm trees as planned. The user's mouse would then be on top of the sunset, not the palm trees, so the second action would be triggered immediately, which would trigger the first action again, which would trigger the second action again, and an interesting but unwanted strobing effect would occur. If both actions were set up on the beach sunset image, because the beach sunset image starts hitting, the mouse would never enter it and neither action would ever be triggered. You can avoid these very common errors by remembering that it is the event that determines the actions layer and setting up your actions accordingly.
you can view a completed example of this section using the share code in the walkthrough. Congratulations, you've completed module five. You should now have a good understanding of how the actions and events system works and be able to set up a range of different events.